everyone from America and Germany. And um, they raised five thousand dollars for your family. <laughs> right now, this is just some of it, but but we will give you all it's, of it. It's it's a very good. Thank you very much. We just gave the money to these beautiful Ukrainians, and they wanted to say Thank something. You. It's 9 p.m. and tomorrow a family from Ukraine is coming to stay with us. We don't know how long they're going to be here. They don't even know how long they're going to be staying here. Honestly, we don't know a lot of things. No one really does. But what we know, Tanner, myself, and Willa, we always include Willa, is that we feel very privileged and grateful to be able to help this family in need. Really, we have no idea what to expect. All we know is that they're showing up tomorrow. They are coming by car. There are four adults and one kid. We are very, very fortunate to have a large house here in Germany. As soon as we got word that Russia invaded Ukraine, we started looking for service opportunities. And if you follow us on Instagram, we posted many, many different opportunities. You guys have been amazing to send us opportunities and really like keep us updated with what's going on in Germany, especially where there is a language barrier. Because of you guys, we were able to put our house on multiple different lists to host refugees. Once that happened, it was about, let's see, a week to two weeks until we really heard word from anyone. And surely enough, today we've heard from like five different Ukrainian families. So that's kind of how we got involved in this scenario. And like I said, we feel very lucky to be able to help out. Once these families reached out, then we went and talked to our landlords to make sure that we could actually host them. If you've seen our previous videos about our housing situation, we're actually just renting it out right now. And so we had to confirm like, hey, is this okay? They are very supportive of it. Honestly, it's been really amazing living here in Europe and seeing how Germans and how other Europeans have responded to this cause. It is very eye-opening and reassuring and comforting to just see so many people stand together and stand with Ukraine. I mean, even just when we were adding our list to host refugees, there were hundreds of other people here in Germany that are welcoming and opening up their homes. So it's really amazing to see that. And not only that, here in our little neighborhood, our landlords themselves have brought over some stuff to help make the refugees feel at home. Because we don't drink coffee, they brought over a coffee maker and some filters and coffee so that will be ready for when they come. They also, as sweet as they are, brought over some porcelain plates. They know we're just a family of three, although we do have quite a bit of plates. You can never really have enough. Not only that, but they brought us mics to make sure we were well equipped. And so many other people on Instagram have reached out, offered bedding, offered mattresses, and even offered their donations. Honestly, the response from that has been incredible. We're going to be able to give your guys' donations directly to this family, because essentially they're starting their life over. I mean, who knows what's gonna happen and if they'll be able to go back, but their plan as of now is to find work and just kind of start over. Such a trying time, I can't even imagine. Brings me to tears, as I'm sure it has for many of you guys, but one night away, Tanner's actually downstairs right now. I can hear him hammering. Yeah, he's putting together a bed. So we'll show you our situation. Um, this is a extra bed that we had for our next kid assuming that we had one over here. When we bought Willa's bed at Ikea, we decided just to get two all at the same time, and it's a good thing we did. We have a blow-up mattress there. That doesn't work. No? it's 110 voltage, and I think I burnt the motor out, so we'll be getting another bed for tomorrow. So. And there's the mattress, sheets and bedding, and then over here, 
There you go, we have a guest bed. So it sounds like we gotta work on our bedding situation. Tomorrow's gonna be busy. We don't know exactly when they're going to come in. We've just heard word that it's gonna be around the evening time. I'm sure they're gonna be exhausted. Our days are nothing like theirs, but it will be a busy day for us tomorrow. We're gonna go shopping, make sure we have enough food. And honestly, that's something I'm a little nervous about because I just, want them to feel comfortable to eat and I hope we can get foods that they like. So we tried to do some research on what traditional Ukrainian food is. Honestly, I, we've never been to Ukraine. This is gonna be a little new, but I'm hoping with the little English that they might speak, we can be able to figure out some meals. Maybe they'll be comfortable cooking a bit. That would be ideal to be able to learn from them. If not though, we'll, we'll be ready with meals and embrace them and just make them feel safe and welcome. You guys, people are so good in this world. Today's the day we get the refugees. As you saw, our mattress is not gonna work, and so this sweet German lady offered to bring over a mattress, actually two mattresses. She brought Willa a book with it. So extremely thoughtful. We're not doing this alone, you guys. Between our neighbors, I have another family bringing over some food and blankets and towels. So many of you guys have offered, donated, it's overwhelming. Thank you, thank you so much. Whew, there's a little bit of nerves just because I want them to feel so comfortable, but Happy we're confident night. we're going forward. We're gonna go shopping now, um, and we're just so grateful. So this is going to be perfect. We have this queen mattress that can fit two people, a separate twin bed, the one that we set up last night, and then in our guest room we have another queen bed that can fit two people. So technically we're at a place where we can fit six people, comfortably, feeling really good about that. Need to get sheets on, get everything up and ready. We're gonna be a little close on sheets and blankets, but I know if we need them, people will come through, so. We're now headed to the grocery store. Tanner got word that they're like six hours out, so we are really having to whip things into shape now and get quick with it. I mean, you guys, yesterday we woke up thinking that today we were gonna be in the Austrian Alps, so there's not much more that we could have done to plan or prepare for it. We're just making it happen. So our plan is to go to the supermarket, pick up some things, stop by a German bakery if there's time. We think that would be a great, just like welcoming gift is for them. We don't know how hungry they're gonna be. I'm sure that they're gonna be tired, but at least they'll have something that they can grab go into their rooms that they want to relax and have that we also love dunas as you guys know and so we thought for dinner because we originally weren't expecting them I didn't really plan for a menu or a meal for that and we're short on time that we could stop and try and do like a duna and buy in bulk so we're going with some big containers to ask a, the duner guy like hey can we just buy a lot of meat and a lot of toppings and a lot of bread and put them together later? So, we will see. The kind Duna guy came in clutch. And same with these containers. Finally sitting down for the first time today. I don't think we'll fully be ready because we don't know exactly what they need, right? And hoping that everything that we've done up to this point is going to be at least enough for them to feel warm and welcome. They should be about two hours away from now. We're gonna take a few minutes just to kind of rest and relax before they come. Hopefully all goes well. You know, it's been kind of hectic the last few days, especially just getting ready, organizing people's donations, meeting up with others to get bedding and extra things from our landlords. It's been really overwhelming, but also very touching to see how many people have reached out to try and donate or to bring things by. So thank you. Thank you. That being said, even though it's been kind of a crazy, hectic few days, I can't imagine what it's been like for them to move across Europe. I'm sure they're exhausted. I'm sure they're nervous. I'm sure they're anxious for what the future holds, right? And hopefully we can give them a warm welcome here to Germany.
Wow, well, a lot has happened since we last recorded. We're about four days into hosting our refugees and it has been, well, I don't even wanna call them refugees, honestly. We've been four days into hosting this beautiful, wonderful Ukrainian family and not gonna lie, it's been hard. Not hosting them, but difficult to see them just face the unknown, worry about the unknown. Being far away from their homes that they just left, right? Like they have a brother fighting, they have a sister in Ukraine, they have family separated from them. You know, we've seen firsthand like there's guilt for having left, but then at the same time, the relief and not being in a constant state of fear, right? Like mm -hmm. that's what we've been seeing, that's what they've been saying. And honestly, we're like we we can't even articulate in the way that probably justifies it all. It's truly heartbreaking to even think about what this family has been going through. They are just the selfless type of people that they want to clean up before we can even touch the broom or the dishes. They want to mm -hmm. make meals. They want to keep themselves occupied, but also, you know, share some of their traditions with us. And it's it's been really touching that amidst everything that they have going against them, that they're still willing to reach out and help and look for others. They don't want to accept anything. <laughs> the smallest thing, they're like, no, no, I, I will do it. Thank you, thank you so much. Like, they're so appreciative. And Tanner said it best, like, they're painting Willa's toenails and they're dancing with her, putting on her Cinderella dress. Um, they're jumping on the tramp with her and just teaching us how to cook. We've had so much fun. And I think that's one way that they've been, feel like they've been able to give back is to cook us meals and you know we love food and they yeah. know that at first it was kind of a little awkward as you would expect yeah. five of them three of us we've never met each other we barely speak the same language i shouldn't say barely because they speak pretty good english two of them almost three that don't speak hardly any english and so you know there's a language barrier we had to face and the first day was a little awkward at times they came in later in the day it was mm -hmm. a long 10 days 10 days for them to make it here when they did finally get here it was these unknowns i'm sure they were like who are these people like you know they've expressed many times that they want to find a solution as soon as they can and there's this urge to get back home right and mm -hmm. You know, we, we pray that that can happen as soon as possible, but there are a lot of unknowns still that are playing out, and we really hope that that can be the case, but it's hard to really predict right now. So the best that we can do is just try and support, and we have been overwhelmed by how many people have donated and brought by donations, asking us what we can bring, and honestly, like, this family is very reluctant to accept anything, even the smallest things, more than just a few pairs of clothes and it just is really touching to see how self-sufficient they are. Yeah, I think the thing that this whole experience so far has taught us is that it's important to care. It's important to help others out and to give love unconditionally and quickly. And we've seen you guys do that. We've seen you guys show, show up for this family and to trust us, which thank you guys for trusting us. Every dollar will go to them. But we've just seen what people can do when they join together for a cause to help other people. And I think that's been really beautiful to experience. You know, we're such like a small, normal, regular family. But taking advantage of what community we do have has really like been so eye-opening because we've noticed like the difference that we can make. And the difference that you guys have made. At first, like Tanner said, the family had a really hard time accepting things and they still do, but once they went to a, a German Red Cross, they saw other families in need. And at that point, like I saw a switch in them where they're like, you know, we've got our needs covered, but let's help other people and they need it. And they are so grateful for all of the things that you guys have dropped off, the clothes, the hygiene items, the, the food. I mean, they gave us a list of specific things that their friends and family needed. And it just shows like it is needed, like it's there and they're like listing it out to us and you guys are fulfilling them, like you're crossing them right off so quickly. And thank you. They want us to tell you thank you. So that comes from them and us. You guys, between all of you guys here on YouTube, our community on Instagram, together we raised $4,000. Like, 
What? I can't even believe that. Thank you again because honestly, we were like blown away. And we just think this is going to make a lasting impact where we're even crossing our fingers that they accept it. We're thinking of even trying to hide it in their car and then texting <laughs> really? them later because <laughs> that might be the only way that we can get it to them. But thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Honestly, one other thing that we decided to go ahead and purchase was a roof rack bag so that they could store their luggage and anything else that they need because it's five of them in a five seat car. That doesn't leave a whole lot of space for clothes and stuff in the little trunk that they have. So it's been it's just an emotional journey, as you can see, to see war firsthand. We've never been so close to it, and um, you know we're privileged to be in this scenario where we just are seeing it. We're not experiencing it. So we just want to share our experience with you guys, so you guys can get a little more of an insider perspective of you know what these families are going through. Gosh, you should be the one <laughs> talking. <laughs> and what it's like on a on the site of hosting as well um well today actually is one of their birthdays and so we've been trying to add some sunshine throughout these hard times give butter flowers and <laughs> attempted to write happy birthday in russian and i think just like having a fridge stocked full of a lot of food has been good we got we went to german bakery and got got them food that they can just put in their room to feel comfortable enough to eat. We actually have two fridges, one's furnished by Tanner's work, and so that's been a really big benefit as well though because it's downstairs with them where they can go and they can just help themselves to the pantry and the food. And so if you host, that's kind of, I would say my biggest recommendations is like, have enough food, get them involved. If they want to obviously let them rest, then they do. Like we just let them like, do what they need to do and luckily they've been wanting to interact with us and it's been really special they told us multiple times like we don't want to lose contact like come visit us like wherever we end up and we're like we will like hopefully we can go to ukraine like we would love that definitely and this is something that is going to probably be more of a common occurrence over the upcoming months with a lot of people still moving west and so Obviously, if you have the opportunity to, we highly encourage it because there is a need and it doesn't have to be for long. There's a lot of unanswered questions of what's the best way to do things, but we've been touched through this experience and we know that it has made a small difference in what is a, a large undertaking for these families. So overall, thank you so much again for your support through all of this. We, we love our community. We love you. We've grown to love this family. And like Marissa says, we really hope that one day we can go and visit them wherever it may be, but hopefully Ukraine. Yes. Keep being you, the giving, loving, kind-hearted people you are, helping out the Ukrainians and just trying to make a difference. It's noticed. It's seen. Have a wonderful day, you guys. Everyone from America and Germany, mm -hmm. um, they raised $5,000 for your family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Right now, this is just some of it, but, but we will give you all it's, of it. It's, it's, it's a very good. Thank you very much. It, it's from so many people. So many people. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please thank take you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys don't deserve it. We just gave the money to these beautiful Ukrainians and they wanted to say Thank something. You. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for <laughs> everyone.